Hey guys, so you may remember my hickory horn devils, these big monsters that I've been raising all summer. And they eventually turned into pupas. Um, and I've had them for a little over a month. Here they are here. I was what? expecting to overwinter them, but big surprise this morning when I found this one. And one had it closed already. These are the regal or royal walnut moths. That looks like a crab with wings. Savannah. There's time in the afterlife? Here there is, yes. So there's an afterlife? Yes. Are aliens real? Yes. Is my grandfather here somewhere? <laughs> no. What is the craziest thing that's ever happened in the entire universe? David Blaine. If a tree falls... Yes. Was the moon landing a hoax? No. Did my girlfriend cheat on me? No. Does she know that I cheated on her? She does. Will I go to hell for that? Yeah. I'm going to hell? Yeah. When you're in hell, is there a way to get out of hell? No. Are there other dimensions? Mm -hmm. Did I live a good life? Uh, it was okay, middle of the road. Like a four out of 10. Who are you? I'm Santa Claus. Really? No, not really. So you lied? I'm allowed to make jokes from time to time. Have you lied about any of the other stuff? No. Am I actually dead? Okay, no. Then where am I? You cheated on me? That's <gasps> right, you're on an episode <laughs> of Purgatory, the show where we catch real life cheaters with fake afterlife confessionals. Okay, that's a really good name, Purgatory. If you don't know, Purgatory is uh, the middle ground between heaven and hell, so to speak. That's what is Purgatory. And as a kid, I learned what Purgatory was, and I remember I was in like my. Uh, like Catholic class, it was called CCD. I remember learning about purgatory and I was like, so it's like a jail cell before you go to hell or heaven. And like my CCD teacher was like, yeah, I was like, so if I'm half bad and half good, will I be able to just hang out there? And they didn't answer me. Jevle, a city in Sweden, about a hundred miles north of Stockholm. And every year they have a Christmas tradition, build an enormous goat out of straw and put it in the town square. It is called the Jevle goat. There is a second Christmas tradition in Yevle, burning the goat down. It's not like Guy Fawkes Night in Britain or Burning Man in California, where something is built to be burned down. Burning this down is arson. It is completely illegal, and genuinely, the people who make the giant straw goat do not want their giant straw goat to be burned down. So they still burn it anyway? They build this every year knowing it's probably going to get burnt down. It's illegal. They continue to do it knowing it's going to still get burnt down as an arson tradition every single year. And they live stream. This year's goat is currently still standing, but because of the straw having higher numbers of seed, it has attracted a colony of birds. It now looks like a zombie straw goat. Crap, so what about the birds and if they start to burn it? What about the birds? Peace birds? Oh boy. Everybody should just chill out over there. All right. It's just that in the 50 years that a 10 meter high, mostly unprotected goat made of extremely flammable straw has been put up here, the goat has only survived 12 times. Usually it's burned down. In 1976, it was hit by a car. In 1979, it was burned down before it even made it here. In 1988, you could place a bet on whether the goat would burn down. Yo, gamble! I'm going. You could bet on that? You think we're bad at gambling. You see the rest of the world, bro. In 2001, an American tourist burned it down, and when he was arrested, he said that his friends had told him that burning the goat was an entirely legal tradition. He got a couple of weeks in jail, didn't get his cigarette lighter back, and uh, left Sweden without paying a large fine. In 2005, vandals dressed as Santa Claus and gingerbread men fired a burning arrow at the goat and burned it down. In 2006, the city fireproofed the goat. It burned down. <laughs> What's the matter? I've been getting death threats. You mean death threats? Not this time. You and me! You and me on your way to God! Die, die! Guys, I understand what I saw! Aaron Zhang is in the semifinals of the Pokemon World Championship, and he's up a game. If he wins just one more, he'll be in the final. Unfortunately, he's about to have some of the worst luck ever oh recorded. Aaron is using will o -Wisp, a move that burns the target, cutting their attack in half and doing damage over time. They're not going to be like the giant goat we just <laughs> learned about with its fire attack. I'm guessing it's going <laughs> to... That city proof, Problem bro. is, uh, this move is only 75% accurate. Aaron goes for will o -Wisp on Conkledur, then Thunderous, and then again on Conkledur, but he misses every time. He goes oh, on wow. to be plagued by full paralysis and confusion. 
and eventually loses the set. But following the match, Pokemon changed the game. They raised Will-O-Wisp's accuracy, lowered the odds of confusion activating, lowered Swagger's accuracy, made electro types immune to paralysis, caused the speed drop from paralysis to be less impactful, and made dark type Pokemon immune to the ability okay. prankster. Honestly, I think that's that's a I'm obviously you want to win the tournament, right? When people lose or like in a tournament, how many times? And me too, if I'm doing an endurance week or I I have a million excuses, right? You know, like God, if it was just that, I could have had that, you know, that was bullshit, guys. That was so unlucky, right? You know, we all do that. This time, that was genuinely unlucky, he could go and say, that was so unlucky. I should have won because it was actually BS. And he could be like, bro, I would have won that whole thing. They had to change the rules because I got so unlucky. Honestly, that's a win in itself and something you could hold on to. the Mets bro I'm about to skip this 300 million dollars can buy you a lot of things but it apparently can't get you consistency the orange and blue are the colors of your nutsack as it's repeatedly kicked every hope and dream you ever had will collapse into a million pieces out of the rubble the only thing left standing are your enemies low Mets never dies it merely mutates into a different form pitchers that can't pitch hitters that can't hit You'll never escape those awful Junes. Juneteenth is a day of liberation, and it also symbolizes liberation from Mets baseball. Where are you, alcoholics? You know it's coming. As you pressed enter, you knew this was gonna happen. Did you write how about no? You did, gone, gone. We had a client that was very upset that we were telling her she needed to settle for $150,000. And she kept saying, you know, my injuries are worth more. And we kept saying, we know this is all the money we can get. And I said, at trial, you're going to be awarded. You're going to get a piece of paper that says your case is a million dollars. Still only hand you $150,000 because that's all the insurance. What's going to happen is if you get a million dollars, you're going to get $150,000 from the insurance. And then you're going to get an IOU from the defendant for $850,000. And that person's never going to pay you a dollar. You're going to actually end up with less money in your pocket because you're gonna have to pay the cost of going to trial. And a piece of advice, if you could do whatever, if you ever get yourself in legal trouble or whatever the case may be, or uh, someone's trying to sue you for whatever, I know you might be like, no, I'm gonna take them to court. Don't, try your best to settle it. The both of you are gonna be just in so much, in so much debt. it wasn't like this is not a joking matter is in a lot of people pushed on the train tracks as of recent at least when i was there it's been a year i haven't so i don't get the paper all the time and read everything before i was leaving it was pretty bad there so thank god it wasn't a person it was happening a lot so these things you just gotta worry it's with it's not just new york city, it's just every city you know there's always just more crime more people the more people you have in an area you know the more crime that's gonna happen and things oh shit she bar she bar she bar what happened there's a thumper, a humper, a real chumper. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my! You saw the cumper? I mean chumper? That was really good. First of all, I'm not afraid of birds. I'm just aware of them. And even if I was, I'm not talking about the backyard Tweety wake you up at 5 a.m. birds. I'm talking about this Jurassic bull with feathers. Regular show was not kidding. This Velociraptor that time forgot can easily one-shot you with one swipe of his claws. Yes, I said claws. If you're not already, here's every reason you should be afraid of them. They can run at 31 miles per hour, meaning they could chain snatch Usain Bolt. They can jump seven feet straight in the air, meaning this bush turkey could clear a shack. And they swim, meaning you couldn't felt your way out of this one. Female cassowary is actually bigger than the males, and the biggest ones could grow to six and a half feet tall. This guy is six and a half feet tall. They have the sharpest claws of any rat titan, that second nail is basically a dagger that oh can disembowel God, both people bro. and dogs, and by can I mean they have, they've done it. And the bastards kick, one man was taking pictures of one when the murder turkey proceeded to charge and knock him off a cliff. 
Cassowaries are naturally shy and 95% of the time they'd rather run away, it's just that 5% is how someone ends up on CNN. There's three types of cassowaries and I approve of exactly none of them. And on everything, I'd forgive all of that if they didn't sound like this. <laughs> Hey, can you get me a Coke? Yeah, I can grab you a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, no worries. Oh, what the f <laughs> We're saved because we got something cute to look at. I feel better already. The duality of the hive mind. Right? From that to... <laughs> no! Next. Never mind. My dad didn't inspire the wow guy from South Park. My dad is the wow guy from South Park. He was the cinematic director for Blizzard for 23 years. He worked on the episode with Matt and Trey, and they turned him into a character. That's him. Yeah, that's actually him. Yeah. It's not a joke. That's not like a similarity. Like, that's him. This is his apartment. This is him. <laughs> oh, my God. Even the guy that cosplayed my dad didn't know he was real, but now he's a real guy. <laughs> Just know that when my friend was 14, she went to a psychiatrist because she had a voice in her head. It was her brain. Like, literally just <laughs> her thoughts. She thought she was the only person who had the ability to think for 14 years. No, but some people actually don't have that voice in their head. And that's the trippy part. I don't have a voice in my head. Wait, I'm... Wh wait, wait, wait. So you... No, no, so here's my question. You literally hear a voice? I don't hear a voice. Yeah, I do. It's not like a, hey, Nags, I'm thinking. No, it's kind of like me, but like a narrator in a way. That's, yeah, okay. All right, so you guys are the same way, yeah. How did I not know this? I've been with you for five years. There's, that's crazy. And also, like, if I'm under a stressful situation, you know, you ever get those times where you have so much going, you're like, I, I, I need to just go think, right? And you're walking, you're just like, you're literally having that inner monologue with yourself. You don't have an internal monologue. Found out that not everyone has an internal monologue. So what I mean by that is, like, they can't hear their thoughts. Is that you? I don't understand. Is no. that you? If they physically wanted to say something in their head, they'd have to say it out loud. Yeah. Like, they couldn't do it. it yeah. I just talk so much shit to you in my head. All of you. What are you gasping? You didn't hear nothing! Next! You didn't hear it! I believe it relates to how we process info. Hundred plus years ago. People would think deaf people were genuinely stupid until we improve teaching them a language. Language is how we process complex thoughts. For example, a deaf person may think by picturing things, or imagining a pair of hands doing sign language cheer 400. Next! Get out! Get out! Even crazier, some people can't visually picture things detailed or not if it's not in front of them. Are you kidding me, bro? You're, you're funny. Guess what? Oh! Levin, keep that in! Take that looks sick! Home. I don't know what I did, but it looks sick. What? So you don't cry for me Think he has an inner monologue next what a beautiful soul what an amazing voice i got a tear in my eye clap Th this was like dick tracy well, villains america's most wanted that police composite don't do justice to your tiny head trejo <laughs> shut your mouth 
Snoop Davis, <laughs> and Eggplant Face. <laughs> what are you doing here, Crow? Oh, you know, just thought I'd come back. <laughs> just a matter of time before we take this place over. You better watch your steps. <laughs> uh oh, I think I offended him. Hey, let's bounce, fella. <laughs> oh, one more thing. Any fighters here that want to make some real money, you best join up with me before it's too late. Thanks for the hospitality. Oh my See god, I'm gonna puke. <laughs> this guy thought of a smart idea since nobody was grabbing his advertising papers. So obviously they're all the same, right? But I'll show you some. Pick one. Any one you want. Doesn't matter. That's the one you want. Are you sure? Thanks. <laughs> Smart. Today's big question. Why do Americans call it soccer instead yeah. of football? Amid the return of the English Premier League, it's worth discovering why exactly Britain Let's and America go, treat the name of the sport like a game of two halves. Basically, the word soccer originated in Britain. In the 1870s, Ox Honestly, it's, it's true though with this. It doesn't make sense. American football, literally, you use your foot to kick off the ball and for a field goal and for a punt. But the rest of it is running. And I don't know why we call this soccer. It doesn't make sense. Students were going through that awkward phase where they were coming up with slang words ending in ER. That's why Brits say tenor to mean 10 pounds or rugger to mean rugby. And it's oh, why I thought a tenor was like, I mean, it is 10 bucks. Yeah, like a tenor, but I thought it was like 10, tennis. Those same Oxford students took the sock from Association Football, stuck ER on the end, and Bob's your uncle, soccer, was born. The word spread to not just America, but other English-speaking countries, including Canada, Australia... Harry Potter. It makes sense. So no, because it was Harry Pot, and they just added ER to it. Next! Harry Potter in it. Harry Potter in it. Super.